So Entrepreneur Magazine recently put out their list of their 2023 fastest growing franchises. Now, when you hear the word franchising, what brands pop in your head? Most people would say McDonald's, Taco Bell, Burger King, Subway, most of the food franchises that everyone has heard about. But the reality is those brands are only four out of, get this, 4,000 different franchises. And plus, they're all food. There are many other big name brands, many of them not food brands, that you've probably heard of before and just didn't know that they were franchises. Or they don't get the same attention that the big name fast food brands get. Brands like uh, Ace Hardware, Pods, Meineke, Motel 6, Redbox, The Maids, and Orange Theory. Now it's definitely exciting to see what the top 10 fastest growing franchises are, but growing fast unfortunately doesn't automatically make it a good investment. With over 4,000 franchise brands out there, how in the world do you know which ones are actually good? And when I say good, I mean which ones are good investments? Which ones are making money? But even more importantly, which ones have franchisees that are not just profitable, but actually happy? Like they would do it all over again if they had the chance. Well, that's why a lot of people look to Entrepreneurs Magazine's top franchise list. Entrepreneur Magazine has put together their list of the fastest growing franchises in 2023, like they've done for many years. So today we're gonna to talk about the top 10. Now, before we do that, it's important that you know there's actually a lot of controversy surrounding the Entrepreneur's Franchise Rankings. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Here we go. And so before we just go popping off the top 10 fastest growing franchises, there's some things that you need to know. Entrepreneur states that their list identifies the franchise brands with the greatest unit growth in North America over the last year based on data that was submitted for their most recent Franchise 500 list. The issue with that is companies that have not submitted their data, aka their numbers to Entrepreneur, they don't get counted. So a brand like Crumble Cookies, for example, who has grown over 363 locations in 2022 alone and over 634 locations since 2020 isn't anywhere to be found on the list. And this seems to be because Crumble hasn't submitted their recent data to Entrepreneur. Now, I'm not sure why, but they seem to be the exception. Most brands relish at the opportunity to be featured on the Entrepreneur Franchise 500 list. So as we start diving into the top 10, I want you to keep this in mind how the Franchise 500 list is put together. You see, the Franchise 500 is an annual ranking of the top 500 franchise companies in the US and Canada put together by Entrepreneur. Now, there's a lot of people in the franchise industry and outside of it that say that the Franchise 500 list is just pay to play, meaning companies are just paying to get a spot on the list. Entrepreneur even has these really awesome badges that franchisors can use on their website that make it onto their list and while there's no evidence that companies pay for their top spots, Entrepreneur does charge a license fee for the brands that make it onto their list to be able to use their iconic badges in their marketing and website. So if you don't pay them, you can still land on the list, just not use their badges in their marketing or website. And to be fair, they do list on their website that there is no fee to participate in the Franchise 500 rankings. Entrepreneur states themselves, the Franchise 500 companies are judged by the same criteria, objective and quantifiable measures of a franchise operation. They factor in financial strength, stability, growth rate, and the overall size of the system, AKA the total number of franchisees in their sales. They also consider other things like startup costs, litigations, and amount of stores or units that have closed. As we dive into the top 10 list, here's what you need to keep in mind, is that entrepreneur lists on their website about the rankings. And they say, what they do not measure are subjective elements such as franchisee satisfaction or management style. And here's the point of all this, and it comes straight from entrepreneur themselves. They state, that the Franchise 500 is not intended to endorse, advertise, or recommend any particular franchise. It is solely a research tool that you can use to compare different franchises. Entrepreneur stresses that you should always conduct your own independent investigation before investing money in a franchise. And I agree. The point is fast growing does not mean the franchise owners are happy and making the money that they want. The only way to verify that is to talk to existing franchise owners. I've seen many fast growing franchises that have a rapidly growing list of frustrated franchise owners. So always do your homework. 
Now, if you need help doing that, we have free resources like our free franchise buying guide and our masterclass training, and you can grab those down below. Use those to educate yourself so you can protect yourself when buying a franchise. Last thing before we dive into the top 10, I also am not endorsing any of these brands. I'm simply providing my commentary on the entrepreneurs list. So number 10, we have Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Now, if you haven't heard of them, I hope you climb out of the rock that you've been living under. Uh, Tropical Smoothie is arguably the biggest name in the smoothie space outside of Jamba Juice, and Jamba Juice is kind of really dying off. So Tropical Smoothie was founded in 1997 in Florida, and as of 2022, they have over 1,142 locations across the US and now over 1,300 in 2023. They cost between $297,000 to $662,000 to get open and they open 160 locations in 2022 after accounting for the seven locations that they closed down. Included in those startup costs is a franchise fee of $30,000. Now, Tropical Smoothie has a net worth requirement of $350,000 with access to $125,000 liquid. The average sales of locations that were open more than one year were $992,000. The top 10% averaged $1.6 million in sales with the bottom 10% averaging about $510,000 in sales. Now, keep in mind that sales and profits are not the same thing. Most food franchises are not seeing profit margins above 15% of their sales. And according to Toast, a large point of sale provider for restaurants, the average restaurant profit margin is around three to 5%. And even though I've owned juice and smoothie franchises myself, I wasn't aware of the low profit margins for the industry before I get started, which is why I make videos like these now to help you avoid the same mistakes that I made. At number nine, we have Mosquito Shield. I wonder what this company does exactly. Like I said, there are so many other franchises other than just food out there. Mosquito Shield is a pest control company specializing in spraying for mosquitoes, but also treats for ticks and other insects. Now, I don't know about you, but I have whatever the blood type is that mosquitoes freaking love. If you and I are around, you'll be asking, what mosquitoes? Because they'll all have bitten me. You're welcome. Mosquito Shield was founded in 2001, but started franchising in 2013. And in 2020, they started exploding. Now, this was around the time they started working with a new franchise sales organization that was very aggressive in helping Mosquito Shield bring on new franchisees. They've opened 295 units since 2020, with over 200 of them being in 2021. They cost between $99,000 and $140,000 to get open. That includes a franchise fee of $54,500. Their net worth requirement is $100,000 with access to $100,000 liquid. Mosquito Shield is a rare franchise that offers some in-house financing. You don't see that often, specifically for equipment and inventory. They don't finance the franchise fee of $54,500. Now on to how much they make. Their average sales they disclosed per single unit operator was $267,000, but the median being significantly lower at $106,000. Median is the number right in the middle. So multi-unit operators, meaning they own multiple territories, they produce an average of $300,000 in sales with owning an average of 3.8 units, AKA territories, and the median, the number in the middle, was $85,000 with an average of three territories. So in reality, the numbers really aren't sounding that attractive. You're talking about $100,000 per territory, which really isn't a lot, considering that each territory costs $54,500 to be able to buy it. Now the highest performer did $2.6 million in sales with 13 units, uh, the lowest doing $25,000 in sales with two units. So keep in mind each unit, AKA territory, has that separate franchise fee of $54,500. At number eight, we have Taco Bell. So does Taco Bell even need an introduction? Uh, do you guys remember the Chihuahua? It's forever ingrained in my head. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Taco Bell was founded in 1962 and franchised in 1964, so they've been around a long time. As of 2022, they have 7,513 locations open with 186 locations opened in 2022. They cost between 1.37 million to 3.3 million to get open with, which includes their $45,000 franchise fee. Now they have a net worth requirement of a whopping $5 million with access to $2 million liquid. 
Typically, franchises like Taco Bell require you to buy a minimum amount of locations to open, hence their sky-high financial requirements. Now, although Taco Bell doesn't list their average sales like other companies, because they're owned by Yum! Brands, who's publicly traded, you can crunch some numbers and estimate an average store sales of around $1.6 million per location. And when you think about the fact that it costs between $1.37 and $3.3 million to get open, average sales of $1.6 million is not that attractive. Typically, you want to see a two to one sales to investment ratio, meaning if on average it costs $1.3 million to get open, you want to see average sales of about $2.6 million. Now, obviously, their high startup costs aren't hurting their growth, but what they could be hurting is their franchisees. And number seven, we have Popeyes. Now, Popeyes was founded in 1972 and started franchising in 1976. You may have forgotten about Popeyes if it wasn't for their chicken sandwich going viral back in 2019. Do you remember that? It's like all people were talking about for a while. But Popeyes has grown like crazy the past five or so years. They went from 2,000 locations in 2017 in the U.S. to 2,900 locations by the end of 2022. And that's not including over 1,100 international locations, putting them at over 4,000 locations worldwide. The cost to get one open has a huge range. If you open an inline unit, meaning a store front connected to other stores, similar to like a shopping center, then it ranges from 383,000 to 1.8 million, which does include their $50,000 franchise fee. Now, if you wanna open a freestanding location, that costs between 1.1 million to $3.7 million to get open. They do have a net worth requirement of $1 million with access to $500,000 liquid. Now, how much do they make? Let's start with freestanding locations. Their company owned locations average $1.9 million in sales over 38 locations. The highest performing store did over $3.2 million in sales and the lowest company owned store did $597,000 in sales. And the freestanding franchise locations average $1.8 million in sales with the lowest performer doing $359,000 in sales and the highest doing a whopping $5.5 million in sales. Now their inline franchise locations did an average of 1.7 million with the lowest performing doing 498,000 and the highest performing doing $5.4 million in sales. So it sounds like there are some Popeye stores out there absolutely crushing it. Now at number six, we have Corvus Janitorial Systems. Now Corvus is a commercial cleaning franchise. Their franchisees are looking to get contracts from schools, offices, daycares, warehouses, etc. They were founded in 2004 and have been franchising since then. In 2017, they had 740 franchisees. Today, they have over 1,900, up from around 1,700 in 2022. Now, this is a very low cost franchise with a total investment of between 9,000 to 34,500, and 8,500 to 18,500 of that uh, is the franchise fee. I was not able to locate any information on their financial performance or sales. Now at number five, we have Wingstop. Wingstop has become a huge player in the food game and they've really started to become a household name. Fun fact, did you know that, that Wingstop is actually publicly traded on the stock market? As of the date of me making this video, they have a share price of around $180 a share. Now, Wingstop was founded in 1994, but they started franchising in 1997. In 2011, they added a big name to their franchisee roster with the famous rapper Rick Ross becoming an owner in the brand. Since then, he's built a portfolio of almost 30 locations and talks about Wingstop and his music nonstop. See what I did there? No. Nah. As of 2022, they have over 1,700 locations in the U.S., opening 169 in 2021 and 192 in 2022. The startup cost to get a Wingstop open range from 325,000 to 974,000, which includes a $20,000 franchise fee. They do have steep financial requirements of a $1.2 million net worth, of which 600K must be liquid. And part of the reason is because they have a three store minimum, meaning you have to open a minimum of three stores with them. Their average sales per location is about 1.6 million, and that's including company-owned stores and franchisee-owned locations. At number four, we have Signal. Besides Corvus, this is another franchise I had never heard of before this. Signal is a security franchise providing residential, commercial, and industrial clients with security services. Pretty cool, right? Would you have ever thought there was a security franchise? 
They were founded in 2003 and started franchising in 2008. They have over 950 franchise locations, which includes adding 269 in 2021 and 112 in 2022. Those are pretty big numbers relative to their size. They do list 134 employees at their headquarters, so hopefully they have the proper support for franchisees. Their startup costs range from $57,000 to $273,000 to get open, with the biggest difference between the initial franchise fee really depending upon the size of the territory you buy. So those startup numbers include franchise fees ranging from $50,000 to $200,000. Now they reported sales on only 128 open franchise units, with the average sales being about $1.5 million. But that's with owning an average of six territories, which would come out to about $250,000 in sales per territory. The lowest performing franchisee did $145,000 in sales with one territory. And their top performing franchisee did over $8.4 million in sales with nine territories, which comes out to about $930,000 per territory. I will say this, that Signal had one of the most transparent public disclosure documents showing sales for every franchisee along with how long they've been in business. At number three, we have Goosehead Insurance. I'd never heard of this company either, uh, but they specialize in home and auto insurance. And when you think about recession proof, everyone will always need insurance. They were founded in 2023 and started franchising in 2011. And I can see why they were listed at number three. Their growth has been absolutely gangbusters. They went from 614 units in 2020 to over 1,400 by the end of 2022. In 2020, they signed on 277 in 2021, another 307, and in 2022, another 215. That's about 800 new franchise units in three years, which is just parabolic growth. They do list over 1,700 employees at their corporate headquarters, so I'm guessing they've been hustling to hire more and more people to be able to support their franchisees. Their startup costs range from 40,000 to 118,000, and that does include franchise fees between 25,000 to 60,000. They show average revenue per franchise producer at 76,000 after one year, 132,000 after two years, and 270,000 after three years. So this is one of those franchise businesses where it's gonna take a good three years of building to really get it going, but people don't tend to switch insurance companies often, so it's a recurring revenue where you can just keep building year after year. What's cool about some of these lower cost franchises where you don't have a physical location is that they don't list any net worth requirements. So it's not like you need a ton of money to get it up and going. It's not a sexy business, but hey, money is money. Start small and build up. At number two, we have Jersey Mike's. I feel like this is another brand that does not need an introduction. Back when I opened my first franchise in California, there was a Jersey Mike's two doors down from me and I became friends with the owner. Between him and his brother, they owned six locations across the country. Now he did mention to me that the profit margins were getting lower and lower, and that was back in 2018. So I can only imagine that it's gotten worse with rising labor and food costs. They were founded in 1956 and started franchising in 1987. The theme with some of these large food operations is that they've been around a long time. It's not like they're an overnight success. That's 36 years that they've been franchising. Now they've seen some major growth in the last few years. In 2020, they opened 190 locations. In 2021, 244. And in 2022, 296 locations. That puts them at over 2,300 locations by the end of 2022. Their startup costs range from 214,000 to 1.3 million, which includes a franchise fee of 18,500. That's a ginormous range in the startup costs, but I'd prepare for the higher end if I were you. If you average the two numbers, that puts you at around 750K. Now let's talk about how much they make. For their traditional franchisee owned locations, they did an average of $1.2 million in sales in 2022, with the highest store doing 2.4 million and the lowest doing 429,000. They do have a net worth requirement of 300K and 100,000 of that needs to be liquid, which is lower than I would have thought with a big brand like Jersey Mike's. And at number one, drum roll, we have Stratus Building Solutions. This is another janitorial company specializing in commercial cleaning. Now I'm guessing with COVID and the emphasis on cleaning, that's contributed to some of the huge growth in this specific commercial cleaning niche. 
But with that much growth over a few different brands, I would imagine getting clients becomes that much more competitive. Now, Stratus has been around since 2004, franchising since 2006. This one's a little tricky because on the entrepreneur listing, they show over 3,500 franchise owners. But when I pulled up their public disclosure documents, they only show 58 total outlets being operated. I think the mismatch is because they operate under a master franchising model which basically means someone buys the rights to a large area and then that individual recruits franchisees themselves and they support the franchise owners as opposed to the franchisor, AKA Stratus, supporting the franchise owner. Stratus would just support the master franchisees. So their startup costs range from 4,500 bucks to 80,000 with between 3,600 to 69,000 of that being the initial franchise fee. The average master franchisee territory generated $2.7 million in sales in 2022, the highest doing 13 million and the lowest doing 200,000. It's really difficult to know what that master franchisee actually receives in revenue because a lot of that would be paid out to the franchisees on the ground, working underneath the, the master franchisee. Now they list, they do list a net worth requirement of 5,000 to 40,000. So this is another very low cost franchise with a low barrier to entry. So look, at the end of the day, this shows that there are franchises in every industry that you can imagine. Really your success and ability to make money will come down to what I call my profitable franchise formula. There's four things in it. Now, if you're curious to whether franchising is something you should look into more, I made a video talking about the pros and cons and what you need to do before seriously considering buying a franchise. And you can watch that video right here. I also recorded a whole training on my profitable franchise formula and figuring out how to find and buy the right franchise. Make sure you're protecting yourself in the process. The link to that masterclass training is below. It's a must watch. I'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.